What's up YouTube? I've talked about sharpening and now I'm going to show you sharpening. Uh, this is the vice I like to use. I mean, I went out and bought it, so I had to like it a certain amount. But you can go like this. So, you don't see this. I've never seen it. Never heard anybody talk about it. But, you put a you put a chainsaw on an angle like this, you get a real comfortable sharpen. It's a whole different story, really. So, you got to have a nice, nice tight chain, although this chain's just loose because I, I was cutting up an old wood pile that was here before I moved in. And uh, cut into some dirt, some metal, whatever else was down there. They cut all these logs into, you know, four foot, three foot sections. Some of them were ten feet. They were all down in the metal and the poison ivy and all kinds of stupidness. So I get the joy of digging through all that stuff. Okay, these are my supplies. Round file with no guide, flat file, riser gauge. Here we go, let's watch the magic happen. Somewhere I learned you're supposed to have one-fifth of the file diameter covered up by the tooth. So if you're looking at it straight down from the top, this way, then you'd see one-fifth covered up. It's a guesstimate. You can feel it. If you go too high, there's a hook. It starts to go away. You don't want the hook to go away. I break off the chrome. When I start to see this, the chrome get soft, I push it down. I think if you break it up, I think it makes, I don't know. Some guys do that. I don't know why. You got this smooth part here. You can break off the extra material with that, and that won't dull it at all. And you don't have to mark the tooth because you can see the tooth that you already sharpened. It's shiny. Shiny and clean once you sharpen them. That's all she wrote. Alright. I want you guys to see how easy this is, this angle. Lots of power in that left arm in this angle. When you have a device horizontal, you gotta reach over the saw. You're down here like this, reaching over it. It's very awkward. I don't like it. This angle right here is very nice. I came up with this whole idea. Actually, I went shopping for a vice and they had one that with an angle on it, and I thought, man, that looks useful. Actually, it saves me shoulder pain. Such a good angle for sharpening. It gets good results. I can push down with this hand, and it guides the file down and keeps it from drifting up, because if it drifts up, that's when you get a problem with the with the hook shape. I'm starting to feel like this file is a little tired. <clears throat> Just replace this file. Every three times 
times I sharpen with a file, I get another one. Files cost three dollars. Oh my goodness, night and day. Why would you waste time with an old beat up file? You can get a fresh one. You can do half the strokes. Less energy burned up. Yep, that file was definitely dull. Most people don't sharpen. Most people just have it done. But I'm telling you, you get a lot more for your money if you do it yourself. You do. And you get a better sharpen. I've, I've had a sharpen done before I wasn't happy with. It made me think how many people are getting by on a substandard sharpening job because they, they don't know how to sharpen and they don't know what it's supposed to feel like. They're figuring once the chain's used, it'll never cut the same again. That's, that might be partly true. If you're talking about a steel chain, steel chain cuts really good out of the box. This is where the tooth comes out. I only do the risers on the left from this side. Then I go to the other side and I do the risers on the right from the opposite direction because they make this screeching noise I don't like. All I do is feel it under the rise, under the gauge. If I feel it carving any of that steel, I do one stroke. And then I might do an angle, just like that. This chain's really tight. See, it's, it's not even cutting anything. These risers don't need to be lowered. But I can lower them for aggression. But I'm not going to. I'm just gonna check a couple and make sure I got a proper, eh, I don't know. I'm gonna put a slope on them. Cause I like a little slope on them. I think they cut better. They come with a curve, it's very nice. You can't really replicate the curve. But, I use this as a protector so I don't hit the tooth by accident. Some guys use their finger. When the chain is real tight, like I got it. You gotta use something to drag it down cause it, if you slip, you're trying to pull it with one hand or something, or even with two, I've slipped and I got a cut on the back of my knuckle, I got one on the side of my finger, that's from sharpening. I'm just trying to be easy on my hands a little bit. I think if I put this little slope on here, I think it helps. I'm pretty convinced about that actually. But it, cutting a little slope on these doesn't lower the riser at all. All it does is change the shape and that's in just just before you actually lower it. Oh. Sometimes they they show up and they're, they're, they're hardened already. Look at that. That's hardened. That was weird. Then I just go over to the other side and I hit these right side ones from the left. All I'm doing is fixing the angle. It's already got the angle. I'm just putting more. That way when it's time to lower it, I don't have to do the angle. If I have to field sharpen this saw, for example, I want to sharpen the teeth. Lower the risers flat with the gauge like this and go. And that's it. If it's one stroke, it's one, 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 all the way around. That's all I do. And maybe I'm crazy because I'm not actually gauging every riser. But these, these cut really good when they have a nice little angle on the riser. That's one of the best things you can do. It seems 
It seems like extra work. But you can put an angle on the riser and then just lower it next time. Or you can lower it. You lower it and put an angle on it. Or you can just put the angle and lower it as you go. I mean, you could check it this way. Lower. Check it. Lower. Until you get to the point where the tip is lower. Done. I did all the teeth. This saw should cut like a champ. Get ready to see chips. Nice chips. So that's how I do that, YouTube. I like a nice sharp chain. It's worth the extra time. You think you're buying time by not sharpening it, but you're buying time by sharpening because when you don't sharpen, you have to sit there and grind on a log for 20 minutes when you could have been cutting it up with a sharp chain in five. So would you rather spend 15 minutes taking care of your equipment and enjoying yourself? And then take five running a saw that makes you look like a professional? Or would you rather look like a doofus for 20 minutes and barely get the job done? Burn up your saw in the process. I, I don't understand the logic doing it the other way. To me it only makes sense to keep it sharp. But, you know, there's no accounting for people's thought processes, but for my thought process, it makes the most sense to just have the equipment in good condition. A chain, you know, people think it's a permanent part of the saw. It's, you burn through chains, I mean, that's, that's part of what having a chainsaw means. It's like a roll of toilet paper. You got a chain on there, you know, and it runs out. It runs out of tooth, you, you get another one. You don't sit there struggling with a chain, I mean, if you don't, you should be able to see on the tooth. You can see these teeth are bad. I wrecked these teeth today because I was cutting this old wood pile. See how there's no point on that tooth? This tooth right here has got a little roundness to it. Uh, man, it's hard to show you. But that tooth right there, there's no point. This is chisel chain. It's supposed to have a point. This tooth still has a little bit of a point, but look how that's got roughed all along the tip. That's been rounded over. Look at this tooth. This tooth I just sharpened right now. You see that razor sharp point in the straight line and no scuff on top? That's what you want in a tooth. And you want it to look like a curved hook in the front, like that. That hook comes all the way out to here. Right there, that's where the hook ends. Some of these teeth, man, look, look at that hook. That's been blunted down by that uh, metal that was in the pile. It's just getting a chainsaw to run how it's supposed to, you know? It's like your, it's like your uh, tires on your car. You can drive a car with bad tires, but you're bound to have a flat eventually. Or you spiral out of control. I'm inclined to think a dull chain is more dangerous than a sharp one. I don't know. But but if you're if you have a dull chain on your saw, you got other things going on in your life besides the dull chain. You know, read the manual. The manual tells you you should sharpen this often. Check your check your chips. Make sure your chips are jumbo. If you're making a little powder powder paste and it's sticking to the sides of your bar, you need to sharpen. And these files are three bucks a pop. I buy them in a three pack, and I you can buy them in a twelve pack too. But. You know, when you buy the chain, the chain could cost 30 bucks, depending on your saw, it could cost 50 bucks. It could cost less. You know, you could buy Oregon chain. Oregon chain is less. This is Oregon chain. Because I wanted a special chain. But 
you know? You just gotta take care of your saw. I mean, your saw doesn't want to sit there and run for 10 minutes over one stupid little log. Basically what you're doing when you run a dull chain is you're revving the engine at its max RPMs. Because you can't put the engine under load when your teeth are all rounded off. I mean you can if your risers are low. If your risers are too low and you dull your chain, you can put your engine under tremendous load. And that's just as bad. It's probably worse. You're getting stopped in the cut every couple minutes trying to get the chainsaw to come free. Your chance of having an injury is much higher. But when you have a, a dull chain with, with regular set risers, you ain't cutting anything. You're just sitting there running the engine. And that engine's running full speed all the time, whatever 14,000 or 13,000 it's supposed to run at. And you're burning it up. It's getting hotter. You know, it doesn't make sense. Just do this. I like to keep it real sharp.